with no further ado, we'll start with our first speaker, Yanev, who's going to tell us about meiotic vegetal center uh, oocyte polarization. Okay, so I would like to thank the organizers for allowing me this opportunity to talk about my work. And this is a session about early development, so I'll take you today to the earliest development possible, the very earliest stages of oocyte uh, differentiation. And so a universal feature of differentiating oocyte is formation of a, a large MRNP granule that is called the Bolbiani body and is universally detected in oocytes of insects, non-mammalian vertebrates, and mammals, including humans. In most vertebrates, the Bolbiani body contains mRNA and proteins of the germplasm and uh, embryonic patterning factors, as well as cellular organelles such as the mitochondria. The Bolbiani body forms close to the nucleus and then translocates towards the cytoplasmic membrane where it disassembles, unloading its content, and thus specifying this region of the cortex as the oocyte vegetal pole. This specification of the vegetal pole by the Balbiani body is, is, establishes really the, the animal vegetal polarity of the oocyte and early embryo that is crucial for further embryonic development as it establishes uh, the primary body axis and uh, contributes to germline specification. And so despite the uh, uh, conservation of the Balbiani body, its tremendous developmental significance and its discovery 170 years ago, its formation has been poorly understood and specifically, it was unknown whether its, pos the pos its position in the cell is stochastic or somehow pre-patterned. -pre and so I was interested in understanding what regulates Bolbiani body formation, and in other words, how and when is polarity established in the oocyte. The formation of the Bolbiani body so intimately adjacent to the nucleus suggested to me that the nucleus might play a role in either forming or positioning the Bolbiani body. But that would require some polarized cues from the nucleus. And indeed, upstream to the earliest detection of the Balbiani body at diplotent stages of, of meiosis one in our genesis, there is one specific polarized nuclear configuration at zygotent stages of, of meiosis that is called the chromosomal bouquet. In the chromosomal bouquet configuration, telomeres are tethered to the nuclear envelope and are clustered to one side of the nucleus, while the free looping ends of the chromosomes face the other side. This is a universal meiosis feature that is important for uh, chromosomal pairing and synapse towards the upcoming recombination in meiosis. However, we hypothesize that it might be playing additional roles in establishing cellular polarity where the animal vegetal axis of the oocyte might be aligned to the nuclear axis of the bouquet. And indeed, I'll show you today that the Balbiani body and the chromosomal bouquet, two universal features in oocytes, are linked on the pathway to oocyte polarity. And so to start addressing these questions, I wanted to first backtrack the formation of the Balbiani body and find the oocyte polarizing event. To do so, I visualized three components of the Balbiani body, the Dazzle mRNA, the buckyball uh, protein, and Balbiani body mitochondria as detected with the uh, DIOC6 lipid dye, simultaneously with the nuclear envelope. Now backtracking these in development, reveals their localization in this nuclear indentation that is even more pronounced earlier, forming what we term the nuclear cleft. And we could detect this polarized aggregation of Balbiani body component in a nuclear cleft as early as pocket and stages of meiosis one. We next wanted to further backtrack these to the zygoten stage, but to do so we needed to first characterize the zygoten stages in zebrafish oocytes and, and the chromosomal bouquet configuration. And for that purpose, we utilize the characteristic dynamics of telomeres during early meiosis. And telomeres in the mitotic premeiotic oogonia cells are found randomly in, inside the nucleus. They're then loaded radially on the nuclear envelope at the liptotin stage, the onset of meiosis, cluster tightly together to one side of the nucleus and in, at the zygoten stages, and a little more loosely so at later zygoten stages, with these two comprising the chromosomal bouquet. And telomeres then disperse radially again and unload back into the nucleus. Another feature of the bouquet is the localization of the centrosome opposing the telomer cluster. And we could indeed detect the centrosome strictly localized opposing the telomer cluster at the zygote and oocyte. 
And so now that we have this configuration of the bouquet, we could ask whether Balbiani body components are localized at these stages and if they're somehow localized along this axis. So now we could use the centrosome as a marker for the telomere cluster and measure intensities of Balbiani body components such as the buckyball or the Balbiani body mitochondria, and we found that these are enriched in centrosome cytoplasm over non-centrosomic cytoplasm, specifically at zygoten, but not in algonia stages, showing that the oocyte symmetry is broken, where Balbiani body components transition, transition from radial distribution in the premyotic algonia to become first localized around the, the, the centrosome and opposing the telomer cluster of the bouquet. And so to test that functionally, we turn to the bouquet microtubules. During bouquet formation, microtubules are emanating from the centrosome and radiating towards the nucleus where they bind telomeres via sun and cash domain proteins on the nuclear envelope. Microtubules rotations around the nucleus ultimately cluster the telomeres and form the bouquet. And so we could uh, confirm these arrangements of microtubules in the zebrafish zygotanocytes where they emanate from a centrosome and radiate around the nucleus uh, specifically in zygoten, but not in algonia. And then we treated whole ovaries with nocotazole to abolish microtubules and found that strikingly, in contrast with the control, in zygoten oocytes of nocotazole treated ovaries, both telomeres in red here and Bulbiani body mitochondria in green were concomitantly expanded, showing that the formation of the nuclear bouquet and the cytoplasmic Balbiani body are mechanistically coordinated by microtubules, and that really oocyte patterning is coupled with meiosis. And so we're able to trace the onset of polarity in the oocyte to the onset of meiosis, where Balbiani body precursors transition from radial distribution in the premyotic algonia to become first localized around the centrosome and opposing the telomer cluster of the bouquet. They're then aggregated in a, around the centrosome in a nuclear cleft, which gradually rounds out, giving rise to the mature Balbiani body. And at these stages, the animal vegetal axis of the oocyte is aligned to the nuclear axis of the bouquet. And so we propose that the centrosome of the zygoten stages functions as a solar organizer that couples meiosis with oocyte patterning, and so we termed it the meiotic vegetal center. And interestingly, after we published our paper, two reports came out showing that the earliest detection of aggregating Balbiani body components uh, um, are, are found opposing the presumptive telomer cluster of these insect zygoten oocytes, as well as around the centrosome of the uh, uh, zygoten mouse oocyte, suggesting that the, mechanism of the mechanisms of the meiotic vegetal center are likely widely uh, conserved. And so we're, we were, we're interested in understanding the potential upstream regulation of the meiotic vegetal center. And prior to meiosis, oocytes are born from germline stem cells that self-renew but ge also generate the mitotic algonia cell. And the mitotic algonia cell go through several rounds of divisions, but these divisions are incomplete and the cells are, are, are still left connected with cytoplasmic bridges. And uh, this forms the germline cyst which is a universal theme in germ cell biology, where germ cells are clustered tightly together, connected by uh, uh, cytoplasmic bridges, and collectively surrounded by follicle cells. And now, our detection of the onset of polarity at the onset of meiosis, uh, uh, with, that, with that detection, we're curious to see whether this could be regulated within the, uh, uh, the cyst organization. And while we could still not detect these cytoplasmic bridges in the early cyst, we could detect the cytoplasmic bridges of, of slightly later zygoten stages. And at these stages, strikingly, the centrosomes with already localized Balbiani body components at these stages are localized uh, adjacent to the cytoplasmic bridges, showing that the meiotic polarization axis is aligned to the last division, the last mitotic division plane, and suggesting that polarization occurs in two steps. First, the last mitotic division determines the future axis of polarization, but then polarization occurs, uh, uh, is executed in effect only at meiotic uh, zygoten stages. And so for uh, the last uh, part of my talk, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about the uh, uh, movements or dramatic movements of the uh, zygoten stages. And so at the zygoten, uh, or, or during bouquet formation, microtubules emanate from the centrosome, they radiate towards the nucleus, 
rotate around, rotating uh, the telomeres around the nuclear envelope and shuffle chromosomes inside uh, the nucleus, ultimately forming the bouquet. And at these stages is also where the oocyte symmetry is broken. We set up uh, protocols for uh, uh, live time-lapse analysis at these stages, and uh, this revealed dramatic uh, or rapid rotational chromosomal movements, I'm losing the cursor here, uh, um, uh, within this uh, nuclei of the zygotin cyst, and potentially revealing dramatic forces that are going on here. Strikingly, we could detect cables of acetylated tubulin that emanate from centrosomes and are specific to the zygotin stages. These are absent from the mitotic algonia stage. They start to grow at the liptotin stages, and then they are fully elaborated at the zygotin stages. This, the, the structure of these uh, uh, cellular tubulin cables highly resembles the structure of the primary cilia, which is also comprised from an, uh, of an axonym composed of cellular tubulin cables that is based from uh, centrosome. We use the, the primary cilia marker arrow 13 b to confirm that these are indeed uh, uh, correspond to primary cilia structures. And so, in the uh, zygote and cyst, where cells are still connected with cytoplasmic bridges, those primary cilia could represent conventional primary cilia as short or mild cellular protrusions. They could also represent exceptionally long subtype of primary cilia, as some of the cables appear long. And they could also represent a specialized subtype of primary cilia that is actually intracellular. And while we're uh, still distinguishing between these possibilities, we're able to record the chromosomal movements inside the nucleus that are opposed to a relatively stationary centrosome at these stages. And this is the, first, the, the, the very same centrosome that if you now zoom to this region here, we can see how it's connected to one, on one side of it to the primary cilia, and then on the other to these microtubules that rotate around the, the, the nucleus, much like a mechanical coupler that transmits forces from one side to another. And so we hypothesize that these primary cilia could regulate, uh, uh, mechanically regulate or stabilize uh, uh, the uh, bouquet movements, either generating the forces or, or providing counter forces for the movement. And while this could be done um, uh, intracellularly, those cables could also coordinate the, uh, the movements across cells within the entire cyst. And so I've shown you today that through analysis of Balbiani body formation, we were able to dissect the dynamics of uh, oocyte polarization and uh, discover the meiotic vegetal center. We were also able to uh, reveal some insights about the cellular organization in cysts where uh, cell division planes seem to coordinate polarity and primary cilia seems to, uh, or could mechanically coordinate uh, rapid uh, forces. And so now we have, uh, on a single platform, we can start addressing how uh, mechanisms of cell polarity, meiosis, mitotic cell division, and primary cilia are all integrated towards uh, cellular uh, differentiation. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, Mary for her great support and advice along the way, my lab mates for uh, their help, our fish facility personnel, and these people for kindly sharing their agents with us, and uh, you for your attention. Hi, very nice talk. Have you tested the role of the centrosome directly in this process? The roles of what, sorry? Of the centrosome directly. You showed the nicotazol treatment, but have you looked at like centra knockdown or anything? Uh, not yet, but we're on our way. We're now making CRISPR mutants for candidate genes, and we'll do that. Hi, so I just wanted to, maybe you could explain a bit more, because I didn't understand the mechanical role that you attribute to the primary cilium. What forces, what directions, could you explain what, what you mean by that? So, during bouquet formation, you have these arrangements of microtubules that attach to the nuclear envelope and, in, and then, in this way, connect to telomeres inside the nucleus. And these microtubules rotate around, and rotate telomeres and chromosomes inside the nucleus. And this, is, this helps uh, 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 um, um, homology, homology searches for chromosomes to find one another towards a combination. But if you think about the entire cell, and, these, and in this cell specifically, the nucleus is, is, is of a great volume re relative to the cell. These are my major forces going on within the cell that are based from a stationary centrosome and connected to a cilia, and so 
you can think of various ways of how this could work. This, uh, you know, speculations at this point will want to address this, but these cilia go into, if they are indeed protruding outside the cell, they're really, you know, tight. The cells in this cyst are really tight, so it's really like an anchor that could, you know, stabilize movement. But the cilia also have some signaling uh, uh, roles that could somehow coordinate or respond to the yet unknown signal, so we still don't know, but uh, different options. So on, along those same lines of questions, um, there are mutants that have shorter cilia or complete lack of cilia. Do those mutants have disrupted Balboni, uh, body formation? Unfortunately, these are all uh, embryonic lethal. So we can't directly address these, but we're hoping to make some conditionals in the future. Thank you. <laughs>